Hey fellow gamers, Chatty Sisa here. Remember when Bioware ruled the RPG world? I know it's a long time ago, but when Mass Effect was redefining sci-fi storytelling and Dragon Age Origins made us all feel like badass Grey Wardens? Yeah, well, buckle up, because today we're diving into how this one's great studio turned into the walking corpse of what I now call Zombieware. Founded in 1995, Bioware was THE studio for deep narrative-driven RPGs. Baldur's Gate put them on the map, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic made us true Jedi, and Mass Effect redefined choice and consequence in gaming. This wasn't just a studio, it became almost a movement. Every release felt like an event, and fans trusted Bioware to deliver unforgettable worlds and stories. Even at their best, problems were starting to appear. The studio became a part of Electronic Arts in October 2007, and while EA promised creative freedom, many believe this marked the beginning of Bioware's decline. The infamous Mass Effect 3 ending debacle was the first sign of trouble. Fans who'd spent three games shaping their Commander Shepard and trying to save an entire galaxy felt utterly betrayed. Instead of meaningful conclusions, we got essentially the same ending in three different colors. Bioware issued a patched ending later in the Legendary Edition, but the damage was done. The trust the studio earned over a decade started to fade. Even though I personally like Dragon Age 2, and also did a review for it, which is linked now on the screen by the way, the game felt rushed and I can understand why it was so polarizing for many fans. After the release of Dragon Age 2 and Mass Effect 3, the original founders of Bioware, Ray Musica and Greg Zeshuk, have announced their departure from the company and retiring in September and October 2012. It is believed they've been pushed out by EA, who wanted to replace the more important roles within Bioware with their own staff. Inquisition still kept the good quality of character development, writing and dialogues, but it did already start to evolve into a different direction than the first two gritty games. The third Dragon Age game was less dark, had open worlds, and plenty of mundane tasks and quests which could be only described as a filler. With the lore focusing more and more on the elven history and gods, Moving away from the original setting with the Blight, Darkspawn and Dwarfs. At that time, the whispers increased whether Bioware was losing its edge. Now fast forward to Mass Effect Andromeda. The technical failures, lifeless animations and bland story gave us our answer. The studio wasn't just slipping, it was free-falling. And then came Anthem. Promised as the next big thing in live service games, it flopped spectacularly. It was so bad that EA literally gave up on fixing it. By this point, Bioware felt more like a brand which was slapped on soulless products rather than the legendary studio that it once was. Behind the scenes, Bioware was bleeding talent. It started already in 2012 and we've seen a mass exodus of creative minds who had defined the studio's greatest games continue throughout the next 10 years until August 2023 where Bioware announced a bigger layoff. In 2020, General Manager Gary McKay joined Bioware, coming from EA. Regarding the Bioware layoffs last year, he had the audacity to write that the layoffs were necessary to ensure the health of the studio, while 50 employees lost their jobs. Mostly the studio's remaining veterans, who obviously didn't fit into EA's idea of a toxically positive workplace where any criticism is heavily punished and where merit has to make place for politically correct thinking employees. 
By the way, seven of those laid-off employees have sued BioWare requesting fair severance pay and punitive damages for what they call unreasonably poor treatment by BioWare. Telling, right? One of them was Mary Kirby, who wrote such memorable characters like Varric, Meryl or Stan within the Dragon Age universe. Casey Hudson, the director behind Mass Effect, now leads a humanoid origin. Meg Walters, the former writer behind the Mass Effect series, has established a new studio called Worlds Untold. Drew Karpishin, who wrote Mass Effect 1 and 2, and James Olen, the architect of Baldur's Gate, joined Archetype Entertainment. Chad Robertson, who worked at Bioware for 14 years, is now spearheading Archetype's new sci-fi RPG, Exodus. These studios aren't just passion projects, they're creating spiritual successors to Bioware's golden age. Archetype's upcoming sci-fi RPG Exodus looks particularly exciting, with Chad Robertson and James Olen actively showcasing their work. And if you want to know more about Exodus, don't forget to check out my channel, there's other vids which are focusing on that game. And now we arrive at the disaster of the moment, Dragon Age The Velgard. Released on Halloween 2024, this game was supposed to redeem Bioware. Instead, it buried them further. Let's break this down in a couple of points. Art style? Complete Disney. An opposite to the original dark atmosphere. Combat? Colorful to the point of inducing heavy migraines, repetitive and uninspired. Dialogues? A cringe fest I haven't seen in a AAA game in a long time. Puzzles? Basically non-existent or made for people with, let's say, mental disabilities. Voice acting? Subpar for most of the characters, either emotionally dead monotone voices or annoying ones as if voiced by a bratty teenager. Although, I have to say, some have done an admirable job considering the awfully written materials they've got to work with. Characters? Unlikable and obnoxious. And one of the most important attributes of RPGs, one that made Bioware so famous, impactful decisions, nada, nothing. It doesn't even feel like an RPG. It feels like a dating sim with occasional combat thrown in with some of the worst writing we've ever seen from Bioware. Worse still, Bioware and EA are actively trying to rewrite the narrative. They've ensured the deletion of negative reviews on some apps and flooded the market with glowing ones from paid gaming journalists. Wolfheart FPS revealed that creators who were even slightly critical during previews were blacklisted from getting review codes. Meanwhile, reviewers who praised it regardless of merit were given access. Representation in gaming can be a powerful tool if done right. But Veilgard does it all wrong. Instead of feeling like natural representation, this feels forced and out of place in a fantasy RPG. It's less about inclusion and more about ideological self-insertion of a few of the game developers. The game often feels as if the entire point of it is to berate the player for misgendering someone and lecture them on the newest gender nonsense, something absolutely not appealing to the majority of the player base, aka Bioware's paying customers. Let's talk numbers. EA and Bioware are saying the Veilguard sold by now 1 million copies, at least according to their own internal memos. Whether this is true or not, I cannot judge, but let's do some math. This game's development costs are estimated to be $250 million or more. To just break even, they'd need to sell somewhere between 4 and 5 million copies. Shipping 1 million isn't winning, it's losing with extra steps. Especially when you consider how much they've also spent on top of this with marketing 
and paying all these gaming magazines and journalists for their overly positive reviews. To make matters worse, EA has already announced there will be no DLC for the game. That's practically unheard of for a Dragon Age title and for me it's a clear sign that in reality they're cutting their losses. The question now isn't whether the Veilguard has failed, it's whether Bioware can survive this disaster. And Mike Gamble, one of the few original Bioware staff left, is now hyping up Mass Effect 5. But instead of addressing player concerns about gameplay or story, he's talking about visual styles. It's not exactly inspiring confidence. So where does that leave the studio? Let's be honest, what's left isn't Bioware, it's Zombieware. It's an empty, soulless husk staggering forward, trying to cash in on nostalgia, while everything that made it great is long gone. As for me, the studio is dead. They've been eroding my faith in them and chipping away at my hope that they're able to create a good game for a long time now. Regardless of my waning trust, I still gave them a chance in playing Andromeda. In the end, it wasn't such a bad game. But it was also nowhere near the quality levels of the original trilogy and definitely not a worthy successor to it. Then 2024 arrived and what goodwill was left in me towards Bioware was crushed by the utter abomination that is Dragon Age the Velgard. As of now, I have zero trust into what the studio says. No amount of sweet talk will convince me they're able to recreate the Mass Effect magic in the next game, neither do I trust a single one of their current writers to be able to write a coherent, adult-themed story without the current-day nonsense political agenda. Let's keep in mind, they are still part of EA, and that says it all. So this year, after a decade of waiting and watching in the meantime what the studio has become, it's not my thumb that I'm racing towards them. It is finally a tired, frustrated, a little bit sarcastic and very disappointed middle finger. The real hope for RPG fans, I think, lies with the ex-Bioware teams and employees who formed new studios, like said, Archetype Entertainment, where Drew Karpishin, James Olin and Chad Robertson are building something new. These studios feel like the true heirs to Bioware's original legacy. In the end, each studio is made of people, and it's these people that make the games we love. Not the studio's name, not a franchise name, or some corporate decision maker. And while I am thankful for the wonderful games Bioware has created in the past, be it Mass Effect, Dragon Age, Baldur's Gate or Star Wars, I am thankful to the people who have made those, not to the hollow, rotten shell of a studio pretending to be something they're definitely not anymore. So what do you think? Is Bioware truly dead or can it still rise from the grave? Do you trust them with the next Mass Effect game after we've seen what they've done with Dragon Age? Let me know in the comments below and if you're as tired of zombieware as I am, hit that like button, subscribe and share. Thank you very much for watching, stay tuned and game on!